And uh, on the telephone right now, I'm pleased to say I've got the drummer from Shuwadi Wadi, Romeo Challenger. So, Romeo, a very good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. I, I was saying right at the beginning of the show this afternoon at 1 p.m. that no matter what music people like, even if they're classical fans and they don't listen to pop music or whatever their background, everybody, just everybody, you mentioned Shuadi Wadi and they know who you're talking about. Yeah, that's, 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 that's quite true. I mean, having said that, it's funny you say that because um, a mutual friend of mine um, who has... Uh, it's just having you um, met a new partner. Um, wasn't quite sure. He met me, but kind of very sure what he but he wasn't quite sure of, um, you know, who we were, were until he Googled us and he said, you know something, you're quite famous, aren't you? <laughs> 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 so, I mean, not everybody knows, but I mean, I know what you mean. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a name that everybody sort of can sort of associate with, the, you know, the, well, certainly the 70s anyway. Yeah, and I, I mean, you you have been with them from the beginning, haven't you? But, I mean, prior to, prior to joining Shuadi Wadi, you, uh, you were with a rock band called Black Widow in the early right, 70s? Yes, yes. progressive, um, you know, we were actually we were on the same management team as Black Sabbath. Yes. And bands like that. So, yeah, so I, I mean, before Shuadi Wadi, I was doing a lot of progressive, um, you know, dark metal stuff. I mean, it was a, it, it was sort of a black magic um, ritual thing on stage and all that business, you know, a, a way before Marilyn Manson and all those sort of bands. And I'm sure a lot of people don't know that uh, you, you you were also quite a, a neat football player playing for, um, you know, Leicester, Leicester City. That's right, with Peter yeah, Shilton. Yeah, I mean, I, well, well, I played I played for Leicester Schoolboys. Um, uh, which, you know, en uh, enabled me to sort of go down to Leicester City um, Football Club, which was at Thurber Street at the time, and, um, you know, to sort of mix in with the professionals and all the rest of it. I mean, I got as far as the reserve for reserve 18, but, um, you know, by that time I'd, I was playing drums anyway. So, I mean, the football thing didn't work out for me, but yes, I was playing, I was footballing uh, wow. person for a while, yes. So, was it then football during the day and rock and roll at night? Um, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much, but I mean, the thing is, remember, the thing is, it, the thing went in tandem, because, I mean, I started playing drum kit in 1962, back in the olden days. <laughs> I was 12 years of age then. Yeah. I had to have a, I had to have a, um, a paper round to pay for the drum kit, which I do remember, I'll never forget it, it cost me 12 quid. Now, £12 in 1962 was a considerable sum up and take an hour. Yes. yes. And, um, yeah, so I did a paper round to do that. But in the meantime, I was also sort of training, uh, you know, with, with the football team and all the rest of it. But, as I say, I've only got to about 17 or 18 and all of that. You know, the, it didn't kind of work out for me. And I wasn't really going to be running around all the other clubs trying to get in there. I thought, well, look, you know, I can play drums fairly well by now. And uh, let's let's see what happens. So I turned professional with Black Widow in 1969. Right. And how did you then meet up with the other guys to form Shuadi Wadi? How did that come around? Well, I, well, this is, the, the, it's the common thing is when when you play in a band and you're when you're a musician in the city, um, you tend to gravitate towards all the people who are in bands and all the rest of. So you and you end up meeting at the same places probably play on the same bill and all the rest of it. So you, you kinda of got you got you kinda of got to know the people anyway, um in 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 your city. And um what I did though was um, I entered an advert. There was an advert in the Leicester Mercury asking for a drummer. I mean I was quite sure I wasn't quite sure um what it was all about because I mean by that time you see Black Widow had split up and I thought well maybe I, you know maybe I need to sort of change direction as far as a musical um, career is concerned. Maybe if you want to make it musical, maybe you want to make it sort of uh, more acceptable to the masses, so to speak. So anyway, I, I uh, answered this advert, I went down to this pub, and lo and behold, it was a, a half of Shibari Wadi. They were called Chores at the time, and they were looking for a drummer. Now this band Chores had in its ranks 
um, Dave Bartram, Trevor Oates, Jeff Betts, Acker, Al James. And, um, you know, I did an audition for those guys. And um, they just said, yeah, you're in. That was after I broke, broke the sticks of the other guy who was also auditioning. I got the job anyway. <laughs> and uh, in the meantime, they said to me, you know, by the way, um, on a Tuesday night, we, we amalgamate with another four-piece band, and we do this rock and roll review. I thought, well, that sounds quite interesting. So, you know, the week, week came by, and um, lo and behold, Shawadi Wadi was born on, on, on the week after where I joined into the band and we played a lot of sort of a 50s rock and roll stuff, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And, and the rest is history. I, I know the rest is definitely history. What, what, it, what was also good about Shawadi Wadi was that in, in many bands, the drummer is always at the back of the group and you often don't get to know the drummer. But I mean, with Shawadi Wadi, the drummer, of course, was all frequently central to the piece or to whatever show that you were appearing in. Yeah, I mean, it's a real thing. Is, I mean, most of Shawadi Wadi's songs, a lot of it starts with a drum intro. I mean, I don't know how that came about, but it just happened. Um, plus the fact that we had two drummers anyway, so, you know, it, it was like a show showpiece for us anyway. I mean, if you went to see the band live, you would have left in no doubt that, you know, um, Shibori Wadi's drumming side of it was, uh, you know, well established. So, uh, it... When you look back now, it seems a, a long, long time ago, going to the ATV television studios and appearing on New Faces? Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, it, it, well, it seems, well, ages, ages ago, actually. Even though sometimes I, I think, well, where's all the time gone? But it really, when you actually sit back and think, this is 1973. Now, the thing about all this New Faces malarkey is that the fact that we never wanted to do any of these talent competitions at all, because we, even then, we thought, oh, they're a bit naff, you know, because they, they were, they're like the um, X Factor of the day, really, you know, getting judged by a panel of people who don't necessarily know anything about music, and the same, it's the same today. But the thing is, we were advised by the management that really, look at it this way, you know, how long is it going to get you to play to 20 million people? Because that's, that's what it's the sort of viewing um, um, figures you were getting mm. in those days. And, you know, we were, we were, I mean, we were persuaded to do that show. We went on, we didn't win it, but the fact is we re secured a recording contract because of it. Yes, yeah. And, and, yeah, and so really it turned out to be, for us, a good move. Yeah, certainly has, because, I, I, I mean, over time now, uh, apparently you've been uh, on over 300 television appearances on, on BBC, and there's not many groups, I mean, given their own Christmas show, because I think you were once given a show called Shawadi Wadi Show that went out uh, over Christmas and New Year. I don't think many groups have had that opportunity. No, I don't, no they haven't, no, that's quite true. But uh, we, thought, we thought something like that was going to lead on to other things, but obviously it was just a one-off. But most of it is that, you know, we, we quite enjoy doing that show. And uh, 2013, of course, the band celebrated the 40th anniversary. You're still going strong. And, still uh, got, yeah, and, and, we, and, and we hope to continue for many years to come. Yeah. Many years to come. And I would imagine that these days, not only do you play to lots of your fans, I would imagine you've got lots of young people coming along to discover you, maybe for the first time. That's right. I mean, uh, what's happened is um, we do have, I mean, what happens is um, maybe their children come along, but, you know, the, the children are our fans come along, but what sometimes um, we get the feedback because, you know, somebody's seen us for the first time, they saw footage from Top of the Pops 2 or something like that, and they're quite sort of thinking, well, well, see what this band's like, you know, they look a bit colourful, but look, maybe we need to go and see them live to see what they're like, and, and you know, it's, so we've sort of added quite a few new um, fans who, you know, who enjoy seeing our show. And there, some of them are like, you know, below 30. Yes. So um, that's quite good. And, uh, and still very popular across the UK and Europe because you still do uh, over, I, I think it's something like over 100 dates still across the continent and, and UK. Yes, yes, yes. We're still extremely busy and thankful for it. 
And what, you what? Know, we have great fans anyway. We love them. And who, what about the present lineup these days, Romeo? Who's in the group these days? Well, on vocals, who's plays Dave Bartram is Andy Pilos. Um, I'm on drums. Rod Dees plays the bass. So Rod and I are the two originals. Um, we've got Rob Hughes who plays drums, guitar, and sings. So we call him the, the, the triple threat. And we've got um, Dean Loach on keyboards and Paul Dixon on guitar. And that's the lineup. And it's, uh, it's, a, yeah, it's a great lineup. I quite enjoy playing with those guys. Very good indeed. Great musicians. Yeah, and uh, people from across the area, I mean, we cover the area, Lowther Pavilion, so we have listeners over there in Lytham, and uh, quite good friends of ours at Lytham Pavilion, where you're going to be appearing. So, oh, right. So yes. it'll be a, a good night. It's uh, coming up at 7.30pm, and uh, it's the 30th of August over there at Lowther Pavilion. It's a lovely venue. Have you ever played there before? Yes, we have. We have... Um must be 18 months ago, two years, I think, something like that. Yeah. We have played there, it's, it's It's sort of, it's small, um, but, yeah, it's, it's, we, we quite enjoyed playing that one last time we were there. So, for listeners who are going to be coming along, um, I'm sure they'll hear lots of the numbers that they uh, know so well. Uh, I take it probably some new stuff in, in the gig as well? Well, no, no well, I mean, uh, what we're going to go with, actually, what we do is we do two halves. We do the first half is like um, from our last album and some of our favourite album tracks. So that will take up the first half. But there will be some singles, some hit singles in the first half. But the second half is like all the songs that you can imagine Shibody Body ever did and you can relate to. That's the second half. So everything, you know, we're not one of these bands who actually try to bore our audience with our new stuff because that's not what they came to hear. Yes. But we do throw, throw one or two things that they probably probably wouldn't think that we'd, we've done recently. Yeah, oh, yeah. So I, I bet it would be a brilliant night. And I would take it that uh, you've just been following the uh, the games, have you? The, uh, oh, yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, absolutely, I have, yes. Because I'm sure a, a lot of our listeners probably don't know that uh, your son, Ben Challenger, won a silver in 1998 in the Commonwealth Games and then won a bronze medal four years later. That's right. And he, well, he also won the, uh, a gold medal for um, your, on the 20, oh, the 20th of European Championships. Well, so, yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's retired from athletics now, but um, I still follow it quite a lot. Yes, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. Oh, it has been, and it will be. Yes, and uh, still a big football fan, I take it? Oh, yes, I mean, I'm just thrilled at Leicester City now, we're <laughs> at Premier League side. I never thought that would happen, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> Brilliant. So, uh, there you are, you see, lots of success all round. So, uh, uh, our listeners, they can come along and see you, and I'm sure they'll be doing that. It's the 30th of August, it's at Lowther Pavilion, and it's at 7.30 p.m. And if anybody can dress appropriately for the, uh, for the gig, that would be also fantastic. Brilliant. Okay. Well, Romeo, can I thank you for taking time out to talk to us today? My pleasure. And My it's pleasure. been lovely to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.